Labour's approach to the war in Gaza has been erratic, to say the least. In November, Keir Starmer threatened to sack any MP who voted in favour of an SNP motion demanding an immediate ceasefire. Just three months later, with another SNP ceasefire motion looming, he's changed his mind pretty radically. Labour is now calling for a, quote, immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. So why the change in approach? Shadow Foreign Secretary David Lammy gave this explanation. Keir Starmer and I have been calling for weeks for the fighting to stop, for aid to get in. The situation has evolved and on the ground it is intolerable and the Rafa attack cannot go ahead. We are following our Five Eyes partners, Australia, New Zealand and Canada, who a few days ago made it clear that there has to be an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. We are mirroring that language and indeed the language now of the United Nations. Everyone wants the fighting to stop. So, according to Lamy, the situation has evolved and on the ground it is intolerable. So wasn't the situation in Gaza intolerable yesterday, last week, last month? Can you think of a single day in the past three months when the situation on the ground in Gaza has been tolerable? But maybe that's not the situation Lamy is talking about. Look, I don't really care why the Labour Party is calling for a ceasefire now. I'm just glad that they're finally doing it. But I don't like being lied to and I don't like being gaslit. The real reason behind Labour's shift in position is that Keir Starmer wants to avoid embarrassment, although I would argue unsuccessfully. Last week, when the SNP tabled a new ceasefire motion, the party's Westminster leader, Stephen Flynn, said this. We need a ceasefire, and we need it now. Since the Israeli bombardment of Gaza began, some 30,000 civilians have been killed, some 70,000 people have been injured, and 90% of the population is close to starvation. In Rafa, an area which is usually home to 170, 180,000 people. 1.4 million people are currently there. And they are under bombardment from the Israeli Defence Force. It's quite clear that enough is enough. We need the UK, we need the US, and we need all of Israel's allies to speak out in favour of a ceasefire. So this week, SNP MPs will be bringing forward a motion to the House of Commons to back an immediate ceasefire. History will judge all of us by our words and by our actions. It's time for MPs to take a stand and back a ceasefire. That motion will be debated on Wednesday, and given that Starmer faced a major Labour rebellion the last time the SNP tabled a ceasefire motion, he's keen to avoid a second run-in with his MPs and their constituents. Speaking to The Guardian ahead of that vote and before Labour's ceasefire announcement, one MP said this. I suspect it will be far more than the 56 who rebelled last time, especially given Scottish Labour's position and how many more MPs are really under pressure on this now. Another MP told The Guardian, quote, I hope we end up in a better position than last time. We need to not get into the same position as last time, by which he means over 50 Labour MPs rebelling against the whip. The brewing Labour crisis also came in the context of a schism between Westminster and the Scottish Labour Party. That's after the Scottish Party conference unanimously backed Scottish leader Anna Sarwar's call for a ceasefire in Gaza earlier this week. All that pressure coming from every side now seems to have forced Keir Starmer to do this. So instead of backing the SNP motion, the Labour Party has now published its own amendment. And the amendment calls for a halt to Israel's threatened ground offensive in Rafa, and it demands the return of all hostages and an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. The SNP's motion uses stronger language, calling for an immediate ceasefire and accusing Israel of using collective punishment against civilians. So it's not entirely clear what the difference between a humanitarian ceasefire, which is what Labour is calling for, and just a, hum- and just a ceasefire. Um, but the implication and the way that it's been used has typically been to mean um, that a humanitarian ceasefire is a pause to allow humanitarian aid to enter. 
Um, whereas just a ceasefire has typically been used to mean just an end to hostilities and an end to the attacks and the violence. So Labour hasn't yet said what it will do if the SNP motion passes, but they have said that they will whip their MPs to abstain on it. However, the Tories have also thrown their own fox amongst the parliamentary procedural pigeons. ITV's deputy political editor has said this. The government are putting down an amendment on tomorrow's SNP motion, and some whips in Parliament are suggesting that only one amendment will be chosen in this situation, the government one, meaning Labour could be unable to push theirs. Whatever happens, the SNP has managed to do what thousands of Labour voters couldn't, namely get Keir Starmer to grow a spine. And on that, this was what Scottish First Minister Hamza Youssef had to say. Pressure from the SNP has forced Labour to change their position on Gaza, which I welcome. I'm proud of my party for being Westminster's conscience and consistently advocating for an immediate ceasefire. It's important the whole House now backs an immediate end to the violence. Michael, what do you make of Labour's attempt to continue to play politics at this juncture, especially when the stakes are this high? Yeah, I mean, I think you're potentially being too kind to Keir Starmer when you say he's, he's grown a backbone. I mean, I, I know you you weren't showering him with praise in this segment, but I mean, I, I don't think we've even gone that far. So the difference between sort of the SNP motion and, and, and the Labour motion, yes, there is this word humanitarian ceasefire as opposed to just ceasefire. Um, and there's also the Labour motion appears to put loads more conditions in. So it's it's a very long motion and it says, you know, we want an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. We want Israel to be assured that an, a, an event like October the 7th can never happen again. Um, we want da 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 And what that seems to mean is that if you don't have all of the clauses met, then Israel are justified in not bringing about a ceasefire. And what does that mean? Obviously, we would all like um, Israel to not be subject to any kind of October the 7th style attack again. I don't think many people think it was particularly productive and innocent people died, right? But uh, Netanyahu would argue that's the whole point of this war. So he would say, I am still going to continue to bombard um, the entire Gaza Strip because that's the only way to make sure that Israel or Israelis are never fearful of a kind of October the 7th style attack again, right? Now, I would say, you know, October the 7th was only able to happen because their border control was was all shifted to the West Bank to defend their settlers and because there is a conflict in the first place because Israel haven't agreed to any kind of Palestinian state. But um, Netanyahu has a very different position. And so he can, I mean, I don't think Netanyahu is reading Labour motions in the House of Commons, but if Labour were the government and they were sort of putting this to the UN, for example, then Israel could say, fine, yeah, yeah we, we also want a ceasefire. But we can't call for a ceasefire or we can't bring about a ceasefire until Israelis can be absolutely assured that October the 7th can't happen again. So basically, by, by, by making a short motion, which the SNP put down, into a very, very long motion, what the Labour Party have done is, is give the Israelis loads of get outs. Oh, yes, of course, everyone wants a ceasefire, but we'll only have a ceasefire once Hamas released the hostages, once um, Hamas are essentially destroyed, you know, all, all of these um, you know, thresholds that frankly aren't going to be met unless Israel also gives up something in return. I suppose this also sort of feeds into this idea of, is the, huma is the ceasefire a humanitarian ceasefire or, or just a ceasefire? And I suppose the humanitarian ceasefire, that to me suggests Israel's war is legitimate, but the costs have become too high. Right, So war is a legitimate way for Israel to try to achieve its aims here, but the cost is too high and therefore let's have a humanitarian ceasefire. Whereas I, my position essentially is that this is not a legitimate war, right? It's not legitimate to say, well, they've taken some hostages, so therefore we are going to destroy um, all of their hospitals, all of their cities. You know, to me, that's an act of collective punishment. So we don't just want a ceasefire for, for humanitarian reasons. We want a ceasefire because this war is unjust. And I think that does have practical implications as well, because essentially, I think what Labour is suggesting is that War is still a legit legitimate means for, for Israel to achieve its ends. Now, I say everyone should put down the guns right now and things will still be unresolved. Hamas will still have the hostages. Israel will still have shed loads of, of Palestinians who, who they are holding um, without trial. There's going to have to be some negotiations for swaps there. Um, Israel will still be blocking any kind of Palestinian state. Um, maybe they're going to have to offer that to get some of those hostages back. Right. So 
there will have to be negotiations. But I don't think Israel should have as a bargaining chip, or we will keep keep killing hundreds of people every day, which is essentially, you know, Labour essentially saying that is a legitimate bargaining chip. Unless you were saying we want an unconditional ceasefire now. Obviously, it has to involve, you know, Hamas not shooting their rockets either, but they've they've been open to that the whole time, right? It, by calling for an immediate ceasefire, what you were saying is that a negotiation needs to happen. And we will keep killing 100 people a day is not a legitimate bargaining chip to bring to that table. And I think, you know, Labour aren't pushed on this because we have a, a media who who tend to ask more about, um, you know, what about the hostages instead of what about the hundreds of Palestinians dying every day? Um, but but there we are. In terms of the government putting forward this motion, so they've put forward a motion which is even weaker. They want a temporary ceasefire, um, potentially leading to a longer ceasefire. So sort of very you know, almost exactly the same as the Israeli position fundamentally, um, they're putting that forward. That means that the Labour motion probably won't be heard. Um, so Labour have now got to decide, do they whip against um, their MPs voting for the substantial SNP ceasefire motion, or do they do exactly what they did last time and, and, and find themselves um, holding out actively against a ceasefire in Gaza? If you were to kind of look into your crystal ball, um, how do you think that this process is going to shake out with these kind of competing um, amendments? I would say Labour will whip to abstain on the SNP motion and they will whip to support the government motion. And then they'll go out on the media and say, look, we think the Conservative one is a bit too weak. Um, we think the SNP one uh, doesn't put forward the interests of the Israelis to such a degree. We had the Goldilocks motion. Um, but unfortunately, because of parliamentary procedure, it wasn't able to be voted on. Now, there will, and and, and this is, will, will backbench MPs buy that is the question. And so will sort of Labour be able to um, push back or, or let's say limit um, a, a, a rebellion the size of the last time around or potentially an even bigger rebellion? Now, that comes down to the incentive structures of, of MPs. And I would say, you know, an MP who is being sincere, honest, and when it comes to this question would, would say, well, it's only the SNP motion that's any good. Let's vote for that. But there will be lots of Labour MPs who aren't really looking to vote for the perfect motion. They're looking for something they can go back to their constituents and say. So lots of Labour MPs have constituents who are very passionate about this issue. So they, they're they not going to be looking which is the best motion. They're going to be looking, can I sell what Keir Starmer is telling me to my constituents? And so mm -hmm. if if Keir Starmer is and, and you know, the Labour front bench can sort of persuade the MPs, no, we, this this is a decent argument. You can tell your people um, then some of them might sort of fall behind Keir Starmer and say, oh, no, we do want the ceasefire. We would have voted for the Labour one. Um, but the SNP one, apparently Keir Starmer is upset because it includes um, a, a statement that Israel are guilty of collective punishment of the Palestinians. It's very obvious from everything they've said and everything they've done. As I say, we need to be clear that a legitimate and normal response to hostages being taken isn't to kill 30,000 people, right? I, th we, I think we have normalized this. Oh, yes, of course, they've, they've, they've destroyed the, all, of the, all of the cities of, of Gaza and killed 12,000 kids because Hamas took some hostages. Yes, taking hostages is wrong. But this is, if you look at sort of the history of, or the modern history of warfare, let's say, um, sort of destroying cities, you know, the ransacking of Carthage, this, this might be how war worked, you know, 2000 years ago. But if you're looking at modern practices of war and what we should consider normal, then destroying the homes of 2 million people, because a couple of hundred hostages have been taken, that's not a normal response. And I think it, it has become part of political common sense, at least if you listen to, you know, the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, um, the President of the United States that this is a normal thing to do. And it's not. That is collective punishment. 